once you have created and uploaded a portfolio in the PRTU, Portfolio Administration function, you can start looking at it and analyzing it in port. So port uh, is a great function for analyzing portfolios, great for student managed investment clubs in particular. So if we just type in P-O-R-T, hit enter, and this is going to take us into the port function. So it's got this standard workspace, and right now Bloomberg's upgrading this to, so it's Bloomberg demo. Um, I'm not going to change that, but the first thing I need to do is select my portfolio. So I've already I've already created this portfolio called the Wilcox Fund. You may have your own that's already created. So I'm going to choose that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my uh, benchmark, and that's going to be the S&P 400. So this is something I also created, and I'm going to go ahead and hit this up, apply and reload just to make sure I'm using the most updated data. And that's just going to take a second to load. So let's give it a second. All right, once it loads up, you see a number of different col columns. You see my portfolio weights and the benchmark weight. You see the difference here. So in other words, we've got a 16% weight in industrials. The market's 21.57. So we're underweight industrials by 5.39%. So you can see that right here. Um, you've got, this is just for the last day, uh, month to date and year to date, it's all going to show you the same number. So some of these are really kind of irrelevant columns. I go over here, it shows me currency returns, but then it shows me some other returns on the right. I really don't care about currency returns. My portfolio is 100% US dollar denominated. So I'm going to get rid of that those columns. So let's do this. I'm going to click on the hide show area, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the currency return stuff. And that's going to greatly simplify my um, view. And so here's what I've got. And so just to level set where we're at, I'm up here on aggregate, aggregate with returns. So this is going to be some of my returns analysis. I can also go into total return and attribution analysis. Over here is more risk type stuff. So we'll hit this in a later video, but tracking your volatility in particular, that's going to be an important uh, thing to look at. So what I've got here is, though, I can do a quick analysis of my portfolio, and you can see year to date. And so I'm doing this video December 4th, 2024. So year to date in 2024, our portfolio is up on estimate, estimated 20.27%, and the market's up 21.78%. So good year for the portfolio, but underperforming the market. And you can see some of the differences here. We've lagged the benchmark here in industrials. Our portfolio is up 70 basis points. The market's up 24%. So we did not do very well in stock selection there. We did really poor selection down here in utilities. But we had some strong stock selection this year in information technology. Our stocks were up 59.87%. The market was up only 26%. So you can get some initial looks right here. Okay. Now, what else can you do here? Well, uh, you can go into, let's say, uh, attribution. So let's click on attribution. And that's going to take you to this new screen. And unfortunately, sometimes you got to re-upload your, your, one of your, either your portfolio or your index. It gets kind of kicked out when you switch tabs. So I hit go ahead and um, re-upload that data. So it's going to think and calculate for a minute. So here it takes me to an initial screen. It's got a couple of charts here to look at. Um, I'm looking at everything month to date. So this is just for the month of December, which is really only a couple of days. Uh, you know, here we are on Wednesday, uh, December 4th. So it's really two days worth of work. You know, let's do something different. Let's go year to date. We might get some more interesting data that way. Inter year to date. And again, hit apply to recalculate. And now we takes you to this screen here. Some of these calculations take a little bit of time. So I'm kind of truncating this and cutting out that time that it took to upload that. But you can see that we've underperformed the market by 1.51%. So it's really just focused on this active return, not the total return. The total return of the portfolio is 20.27. The benchmark's 21.78. The active return is 1.51%. And remember, I've been able to, I've uploaded our holdings throughout the year. As our students have sold off positions and bought new positions, I've gone into PRTU and updated this Wilcox, Wilcox Investment Portfolio, Wilcox Investment Fund, and that keeps my portfolio alive. So this is going to be a fairly accurate expression of our return. 
So you can see we've underperformed. We had negative stock selection of only 11 basis points. Most of our ne negative excess return has come from asset allocation, minus 1.4%. And um, so let's let's figure this out a little bit. If we go into our stock, our top stock contributors, it's going to show you our best stocks and our worst stocks in terms of which stocks we had a position in, the market went in our direction, and our position was big enough that it made a difference. So super micro computer had a big uh, beginning of 2024 and had a kind of a disastrous end of 2024. We ended up selling the stock back in March, kind of near a peak at around, I think, $1,200 per share or so. So uh, we made a lot of money. We made over 6% of our portfolio excess return was attributed to super micro. So that is huge. Um, Whereas some of these other ones were a little smaller, Brown and Brown added 46 basis points of excess return to our portfolio uh, over and above the benchmark. Now we had some stocks, of course, that hurt us. Huntington Ingalls, these are all stocks we owned. Adcor and Otter Tail, Top Golf, these are all stocks we owned. They didn't do very well. They underperformed uh, in the year 2024, and so they detracted value. So that gives us a good ability to talk about these stocks, what helped, what didn't. You know, what else can we do here? Well, uh, let's click on uh, this custom button. Let's, cl let's click on this, asset allocation and security selection. So that was an overview. This tab right here um, allows you to drill down a little bit. Okay, so like communication services, I just clicked on that. All right, now it's a little bit, you know, squishy in here. So what I can do is get rid of this top part. Let's move, get rid of that and I can go through like some of the stocks that we owned. These are stocks that we owned right now. So I don't know that I love this particular screen. So let's jump out of this. So I click on this asset allocation and security selection button again. And now because I've gotten rid of the top part, I can look at this a little bit better. And you can see that the asset allocation, let's, ch let's check out the asset allocation first. So let's see if we can make sense of some of these numbers. I can see right here, healthcare our asset allocation in healthcare hurt us by 49 basis points. Can I explain it by my weights? Now, the problem is these are our current weights, or this is the average weight. Sorry, this is the average weight over time. And, you know, averages can go up, you know, they can, we might've been overweight at one point and underweight at another point. So it doesn't really show you that here. But what it does show you is that we've in general been overweight healthcare and, that's in, and the sector itself, let's forget about our portfolio return the sector return for the benchmark was only 9%. In a year that the market was up 21, the sector was up nine. So we overweighted a sector that did poorly relative to the benchmark. That's why this is a negative number. Stock selection is when you're comparing your returns versus the benchmark returns. And where we see positive spreads like here, 38 versus nine, you're going to see positive search security selection. So that's that's going to show it to you. You can drill down and click on this, and this goes you through the stocks that you own and the stocks that the benchmark owns all in one fell swoop here, and uh, it'll show you some of the performance differences here. Now, we can also go into custom uh, area, and this allows you to look at it at a big picture level. What's a good idea here is to then even export this data right here on this X Excel button. And then you can do your own Brinson Fackler attribution. If you've got your portfolio returns and your benchmark returns, you can do your own Brinson Fackler attribution. They do one for you here, but you can do it yourself. And you can actually, again, drill down a little bit. So if I wanted to go into say consumer staples, it will show you not only the stocks that we owned like BJ's, but it will also show you the returns of stocks we did not own. So we didn't own Darling Ingredients, for example. And that, uh, so we had an active underweight of that of 24 basis points. And this stock uh, only was actually down 24% during the year. And so we had an active excess return of plus 24 because we didn't own it. So, you know, you can drill down, you can go all the way down through here and go through every single stock. You can export this, expand it. There's a lot you can do with it. So this is a good uh, primer on, um, on attribution. In terms of total return, this just show, this gives you a running total of how the fund has done relative to its benchmark. And so it's been a little bit of a tough year for our students in the sense that we started off the year so strong in 2024. We were actually outperforming the benchmark at one point by almost 10% this year. 
And then we gave up a lot of that uh, during the first part of this semester, the fall semester of 2024. Um, now, uh, we've we've done a lot of our own analysis on this fund, and you know it's just been really driven by stock selection lately. So that it is what it is. But this just shows you this is shows you the return of the fund throughout the year, the total return, and this is the return of the S and P 400 throughout the year. And so we're kind of on top of each other now as we head in to the end of the year. Anyways, I hope this is a nice um, primer for you on some of the things you can do in port. On other videos, I will take a look at some of these other. Um, functions such as particularly tracking your volatil volatility. Great for a risk team if you have a student managed investment fund risk team. Um, anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel because this is where I make finance fun for students. Thank you.